Okay, good morning. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning. Uh, this is our Thursday edition uh, live stream. So on Thursdays, I usually introduce to you what our plant of the week is. So my name is Sarah Smith. I'm a horticulturalist here at Rogers Gardens and let's get into it. So um, if you follow us on Instagram or Facebook or you get our um, emails, with all our stuff that we're doing and all the cool things that we're doing here in the nursery, then you probably know that we are kind of gearing up for our hummingbird uh, summer event. So today I'm going to kick that off by talking about a really popular plant for hummingbirds and tell you a little bit about care, different varieties, um, and you know answer any of your questions you may have for me. So this is the plant of the week. This is salvia. So there's a lot of different types of salvia. This particular salvia is called salvia gregii. Um, they, there's a lot of different colors with the salvia. Um, this is such a great one for hummingbirds, especially in this red color. However, hummingbirds do not require red only flowers. So I think that's a common misconception. They will come to any color. In fact, we just had a couple of hummingbirds um, going for the white salvia here. So hopefully maybe we'll get them back in screen for you guys to see. Um, but yeah, this is salvia, salvia gregii. This is is a perennial salvia. Uh, doesn't get too big. Max is out about three feet by three feet, so tall and wide. Um, but you can keep it even smaller with some um, pruning, and we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, but this is a really great plant. It was really interesting when I was getting ready. I was watching the hummingbirds come to the flowers. They love anything with a tubular throat, and that's exactly what this has. But there's a little part in here where the stamen pops down when they put their beak in. It actually pops down and touches them on the top of the beak. So this plant has learned how to have the hummingbirds help them pollinate. So it goes from flower to flower to flower and that little piece comes down and touches them on the beak and they go to the next one and now they have the pollen all over the top of their beak and they go around and they pollinate everything. So it's really kind of cool. It's a very symbiotic relationship that they have with each other. Uh, so it's kind of neat to watch them actually go and you can see that piece move down. Um, so, but yeah, this is a really, really easy plant. Requires full sun. Um, there's a lot of different colors. I pulled some of my other favorite ones here. I love this one. This is a new one that we got. I'm completely obsessed with this color. Uh, we have it in a four inch, which is really nice. So it's a very um, inexpensive uh, price point on this and it's called Smoke and Lavender. And isn't that color just absolutely gorgeous? It's so pretty, really unusual. Usually you see them in the reds and the pinks and stuff and these nice bright colors, but I just thought this color was so pretty. I had to pull that one so you can see it. We also have it in white. Uh, so we carry it in uh, four inch, the one gallons, um, sometimes two gallons even, um, but they grow really, really fast. Um, they require full sun. They don't require a lot of water. They're actually native through parts of Texas and Mexico. Um, and they grow on a lot of the rocky hillsides and stuff. So they want really, really good drainage. Uh, so in that way, it's nice because you don't have to water them too frequently. Uh, really around here, especially with like, we even had a little bit of rain this morning. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> um, uh, they really only need to be watered maybe about twice a week. Uh, three times a week when it's really warm and you want to make sure that's draining through really nice. So they do well in pots. If you do plant it in a pot, I suggest using um, the cactus mix. You can do a 50-50 regular potting soil with a cactus mix um, or just straight cactus mix would be fine um, with them. And um, for pruning wise, so these are really going to start flowering spring through autumn. Um, when they are done, I do suggest deadheading them. So I pulled one here so you can actually see it. This one has some pieces that need to be deadheaded. So it has a couple pieces that got broken. Um, so you just want to pull those kind of pieces off. They are a smidge brittle, I've found. Um, so you want to be careful with them um, because they are a woody plant and not herbaceous. Uh, these pieces can break on you occasionally. But when the piece is done, so like this little piece right here is done, um, but there's two nice little flower uh, spikes starting on either side. I'm going to take my pruners and just go down just on top of those two on either side. I'm gonna cut that piece off and that's it. What's nice is that keeps it nice and tidy, but it also keeps it flowering. Um, anytime you have a perennial plant, keeping it deadheaded is really important because what happens is once this piece is done and it starts to set seed, the plant thinks, okay, great, my job is done. 
and it doesn't keep flowering necessarily or definitely slows down. Um, so by keeping these pieces deadheaded and keeping it from actually going to seed, and sometimes you can use your fingers to break these pieces off too, um, that keeps it really flowering and full of flowers and producing flowers constantly. And then it also keeps it very tidy and keeps it nice and compact. Um, this is not one you necessarily need to prune. Um, if you don't prune it, however, I find that it gets a little bit floppy and a little bit wild. So it kind of depends on what you're looking for in your garden. If you want something really nice and compact and tidy, keep it dead ahead the whole entire time. You want to slow down on your pruning in the winter time. Don't do any kind of hard pruning. When you want to do your really hard pruning, if you need to have it a specific size, you want to start that in the springtime. You'll notice new growth coming out the bottom. Um, and that's when you want to give it a nice hard prune if that's the look you're going for. So if you want it really nice and rounded and full, that's when you're gonna give it its really hard prune. But to keep it nice uh, through the growing season, just keep deadheading it, and that will keep the size really uh, controllable and keep it compact and very, very tidy. Um, they don't really require a lot when it comes to fertilizing. Um, any kind of flowering fertilizer will work really well. Our garden, um, or down to uh, earth, a uh, rose and flower fertilizer is really great. It's nice and easy. It's granular. You just throw it around the bottom. Um, once a month would be fine. I fertilize all my roses once a month. So I occasionally will just every other month or so go through and fertilize my salvias while I'm doing that, but they don't require a lot, which makes it really nice. So it's a very low maintenance plant. Um, doesn't require a lot of water, just full sun pretty low maintenance, which is pretty awesome. And it's just so absolutely beautiful. The foliage actually has a little bit of a smell to it too kind of minty a little bit um, but it's nice because it comes in so many different colors so it's a really versatile plant it can go in a lot of different kinds of garden styles uh, so if you're doing a wild kind of style um, oh, we just had a little hummingbird I was really hoping to get one on <laughs> the live stream but not quite yet the Annas are the ones that are really flying around and it's funny they're uh, a little territorial so they've kind of been fighting over the plants um, which is kind of awesome um, but yeah you can put it in kind of a wild naturalized looking garden um, you can also do it in a really formal garden there we go. We just finally got them. <laughs> I was really happy about that. Yay. Uh, they also work in very formal gardens too, because if you keep them really nice and um, pruned and keep them very rounded, they work really well in that formal. They pair really great with roses because they require the same kind of uh, sun and water. Uh, so that makes it really nice. Uh, even uh, okay with citrus and citrus in the same areas, because wherever you're growing those uh, successfully, you can grow these absolutely successfully. It's a really good underplanting for uh, some of your taller stuff. Just make sure you're not shading it out too much. Uh, if it gets too shaded, it can get a little floppy. They don't really require any staking unless it's getting shaded or if you just never ever prune it, it might get a little leggy. Uh, so I only suggest even if you don't want super formal looking, at least keep it deadheaded. That will keep the size really nice on there. But yeah, they're absolutely a beautiful plant. The hummingbirds go bonkers over them, which is great all colors not just the red uh the red though is so classic uh and the hummingbirds do really prefer the red and bright colors but if you have a good mixture in your garden of bright colors you can get away with some of the other colors as well and they'll absolutely go for that so it's a really fantastic plant i hope you guys can come in and join us for uh our hummingbird event we have all kinds of feeders all over the place um we even have a couple of little nests with some little baby hummingbirds in it that we've all been checking out uh so it's really going to be a really really fun event tons of new types of feeders in the store things i've never seen so it's kind of amazing how much uh that has grown and changed and the different kinds of things that we have available for the hummingbirds um and make sure you got good plants so if you've got good plants then a hummingbird feeder is great uh but definitely making sure you have food for them that they uh can appreciate that's natural is really great um is there any questions um there is one thank you sarah yeah, yeah there is <laughs> one could you just re-show the plants again yeah. i want to zoom totally. in on them yeah so this is the traditional red this one co is called heat wave blaze so salvia gregii, I always say that wrong, salvia gregii, but there's a lot of different uh, colors. Um, some are a little bit smaller and more compact than others, uh, but this is really the traditional one that the hummingbirds really, really like color-wise. Um, then we have a couple of other ones, and I didn't even pull everything we have. We even have more, and I know we're gonna get some more. Um, ignition fuchsia. 
So this one needs a little bit of deadheading, but look at that color. And what I really, really like about this is how the stem gets kind of darker as it gets towards the top. So it really has a lot of beautiful contrast. Uh, this would pair so great with like blues and purples and whites. Uh, it's really jewel toned, which is really beautiful. Um, then we have another one. I think this is also, this one is the Heat Wave Sparkle. So it's like a pinky kind of color on it. Uh, that kind of hot pink color. Um, and then we have a couple in four inch, um, which is nice. We don't always get the four inch, but uh, we've had a couple of these recently. Uh, this is La Luna, so this is a white one. I also have a white one called Ignition White as well. Um, and then this one is the Smoke and Lavender. I'm just obsessed. Look at that color. That would pair so great with like peaches and some whites. Uh, it's just such an unusual, I'm a sucker for the dusty colors <laughs> these days. And I just love this one. It's so pretty. Um, even like we have uh, a handful left of the Dahlia, the um, Cafe de Le Oh, why am I forgetting the name of that one all of a sudden? I just did a live stream on it, but the um, Apricotti Dahlia uh, that we have, this would pair so well with that because it almost has a little bit of an uh, apricotty color um, right in the middle there. So it's so pretty, very unusual. You don't see stuff um, like the Salvia Gregii's in this kind of color tone. So I've been completely obsessed with this one. Aren't they pretty? They're so easy too. I love the ease of this. It's kind of one of those plant it and kind of forget it other than just giving it a deadhead every once in a while. Um, but other than that, and then one prune a year, if you want to, totally not even necessary, uh, just makes it so easy. And just having something that hummingbirds are so attracted to is really fun. It's so fun to walk by and watch them kind of float around in here and, and dive around between each other. Sometimes we call them the, the chihuahuas of the bird world because they're so tiny, but so they're so loud and they're just all over the place and kind of crazy, which I think is so fun. So yeah, please come in and join us for our hummingbird summer. Um, it's going to be a really, really great event. I'm so excited about all the different things that we have planned. Uh, we're going to also be doing some um, in-store, in-person um, events and seminars and stuff with you guys. So make sure that you are signed up on our email list so you can be the first ones to know about that. Um, if you're following us on Facebook and Instagram, that's absolutely great. You can tag your friends, let anybody know who's local uh, that might be into coming in and checking out all the awesome stuff we have going on. The butterflies here have been insane as well. So it's not just hummingbirds. Yesterday I was noticing tons and tons and tons of butterflies all day long just flitting around uh, down through our bird and butterfly garden um, and then check out our YouTube page we got a lot of really great information there we always post these videos there so uh, but it's great to go back through the years and see all the different things we've done here uh, there's a ton of content there too so thank you so much for joining me again my name is Sarah Smith I really appreciate you tuning in and checking out all of our different live streams uh, our plant of the week that we do on uh, Thursdays. On Tuesdays, you usually see Suzanne and she's always talking about different garden topics. And check out for our new events that we have coming up. We are actually going to be doing in-person events, which is really exciting. Uh, so we can come in and see each other's faces. I think that'll be absolutely great. So stay well, be safe, and happy gardening. Bye, guys.